Hi, hope you guys are doing well. So today we'll be doing the Pokeball animation for uh, you know sending out a Pokemon and returning the Pokemon back into the Pokeball. So first of all, uh, let's just see what we got over here. So first, this is the coming out of the Pokeball animation, okay? And second is going to be the return animation, okay? So uh, obviously you guys will need the Pokeball and the po uh, Pikachu model. So uh, you, I'll leave a link to these in the description below. You can uh, I exited the uh, free asset video last time, and this was the website. So the Beast Ball, I'm recommending you to use it because one, it's actually a really cool design. Secondly, it's already rich, so you won't have to bother with the uh, opening up animation because we need it for the first part. And you can also download the Pikachu model, or you can use any other Pokemon model. That's up to you. I actually picked this one because it was also rigged so if you can actually just search them out over here it won't be that much of a problem so i'll leave the link to the both of these in the uh, description below okay so let's get started so first we'll actually be sending out animation so let's just start with the background so the uh, beast ball is actually rigged okay as you can see over here there is actually a small bone over here it only has two bones so uh, you, i hope you guys are, are familiar with uh, keyframes because a lot of this has been done through keyframes and uh, basically through keyframes. So when I select this and go to uh, pose mode, you can actually see it has a few uh, keyframes. One is actually for it being close on, okay, for location rotation. I you can add a keyframe right click on I and then location location and rotation. Okay, that's all you'll need. Then the next keyframe it actually moves forward and also starts opening up. So uh, yeah, this was the two, the two keyframes and then that's about it. I don't know why there's a keyframe over here at it because I didn't know there was. So this is actually the basic animation. The Pokeball just opening up. So you can uh, obviously just select the bone and click on R to actually rotate it like this and open close it as you wish. So the next part is obviously uh, the uh, this uh, I don't know what it's called. So basically it's actually just a cone. I actually just modeled it. Right, let me just turn off the um, Okay, it's basically this show, uh, this sort of shape, but because of the modifier, it's actually showing up like this, and um, it's actually uh, it has a subdivision surface modifier of two levels. Okay, and our displacement modifier with the coordinate set to object and this empty or here it's actually controlling this uh, displacement. So the empty has keyframes from frame one to hundred on its rotation on x, y, and z axis to make it really random, as you can see, because the uh, as, as long as this empty uh, rotates, the uh, mesh displaces, and when it stops, the mesh also stops. Okay, as you can see, I'm moving the keyframes, but it's not moving. So that's how it works. And that's all this part was done. And um, so um, the next part is, I guess, it's texture. Of, it's actually simply an emission shader. So obviously, we'll have to turn on bloom. Uh, so simple, it's not just a simple emission shader, but um, slightly complex. Uh, it's a mixed shader combined with a trans. Uh, parent PSCF okay so obviously the blend mode has to be alpha clip shader mode to be none and then the mix shader also connected with another another mix shader which has an emission shader of white and blue color both have the strength of uh, 5 and a color ramp and with a layer weight node that has facing and blend to 0 0.5 because it's adding a little bit of randomness to it we actually don't want it to be completely white because it, then it will look sort of weird because it's 3d and you know it looks flat and weird so the final mixture has uh, a color ramp with a separate xyz you can actually get all of these by simply going shift a searching them and you, you can see the names over here and the mapping node and then a texture coordinate node with the object selected and the empty or this empty this circular empty this is actually what's controlling it from uh, controlling it okay wherever this empty goes it's actually uh, it brings down white and black okay or oh, white and transparent mission white transparent so it goes over here and then goes back because uh, again we don't need, uh, need it to be shining consistently because now the Pikachu is actually appearing send go here so this was a uh, this was the basic node of node setup. Okay, make shader, make shader, mission two mission shaders, transparent, two color ramps, XYZ node, layer weight, mapping, texture coordinate with an object, and the object is uh, this uh, sphere because it's invisible, it's not going to be uh, seen anyway. So now the next part is the uh, Pikachu starting to appear. Okay, so obviously uh, the keyframes are actually on its uh, rig. Okay, that's why I actually picked it because the rig uh, has it. So I actually did what uh, did. I actually scaled it like this. First, I added this keyframe, 
okay so that its size would be appropriate and then i went back over here and then scaled it down to zero and then added it to another keyframe this way it was easier to control it and um, also the location because as you can see is actually it has to start from where uh, this uh, ends okay so a keyframe on its location and uh, on its scale the uh, on meters and as for the body uh, let's just check it out uh, as for body uh, it has obviously the same um, uh, displacement modifier the same settings the difference is that the strength actually changes okay so the strength actually is uh, 100 of the displacement modifier it also has a voronoi texture the settings will actually vary so it actually doesn't matter that much but the strength will start from 100 and then start lowering the strength because again the pikachu will actually start taking its proper form so about over here you can actually set the strength to zero again and it will be on its normal shape and as for the texture uh, it already has a header texture. I just had to add these extra things. So basically, it was just a mix shader with an emission shader or with a color ramp. The color ramp controls the the uh, uh, the shininess. Okay, of the uh, Pikachu model, you have to do it with all of these. Okay, I didn't do it with all of these. I only did it with one because it, I didn't feel like it. And what's the point? It's going to be the same process repeated again. So that's why that's why I didn't do it. So it also has keyframes on it. Uh, it uh, this is all this fact and the other one both are actually completely based on how well you, uh, you can actually time the keyframes and it's actually not that hard so um, let's just move on to the uh, second one but let's just refer this again okay and I just added this model animation so now for the second part the second part uh, let's just view it again okay so for the second part obviously the pokeball isn't animated at all it, uh, it doesn't need to open up it just stays at one place it actually has this uh, slender over here and it this slender has a lot of subdivisions on it okay because we need to have, have it deformed so uh, the slender also has the again the same displacement modifier it's using the same technique up until frame 24 it actually uh, the strength is set to zero Okay, and, and after frame 24, the strength starts increasing of the displacement modifier. It again has the same Voronoi texture. The settings will again of size will depend upon how you like it. So the strength keeps increasing and it also starts moving again. The Pikachu again has the same process but reverse. Last time, the armatures had the uh, had the scale set to zero first and then increased. Right now, it's uh, it's entirely opposite. Right now, they have a higher scale and then uh, as we move forward, the scale starts to move towards zero. Okay, and the location also obviously changes again like the same way. It should move towards the cylinders. So that's why it actually gives the illusion that the Pikachu model is actually going towards the order. In reality, it's not because we can see its its origin point is still over here. So the Pikachu model actually just becomes invisible, nothing else, because its scale is set to zero. That's why it becomes invisible. So now let's look at the uh, materials for this laser. It obviously have follows the uh, same logic as the um, uh, the first animation, but the uh, the uh, setup is sort of different. Sort of different. The laser is actually controlled by again an empty. Okay, so same way, separate X, Y, Z, uh, you can actually uh, use, uh, so I actually have it on Y axis, and the laser effect is actually created by using an emission and transparent shader. Obviously, the blend mode has to be alpha blend, shadow mode, alpha clip, and, and, and add, add shader this time. It's except instead of a mixture, I had it on add shader to actually make it look a little bit more smoother. For some reason, it does the job a little bit better, and a uh, transparent shader or mix shader. So it's actually really simple. Mix shader. With an add shader, the add shader has emission transparency, and the mix shader also has another transparent shader, a color ramp that is being controlled by uh, the uh, of, uh, of the separate XYZ mapping and texture coordinate, which has an empty control in the position. If I move this empty, you can see that it's what control controlling it, controlling it. So as for Pikachu, again I only did it with one part of its body. You have to do it with all of them. So it also has the uh, mix shader with the Pikachu base texture. Okay, this is the Pikachu base texture. I did a little bit of editing over here, and an add shader with again the emission and transparent shader to actually give it that uh, translucent sort of effect. And the again color ramp has the keyframes. As you can see, if uh, we, as you can see, we have to insert the keyframes on these sliders. So it's again really dependent upon how you time it. How you look at it, and uh, again, it will require a lot of uh, a little bit of tweaking. It's not really that difficult, as you can see. It's really pretty simple. So I hope you guys learned some thing today. Please leave a like, share with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and if you have any suggestions for tutorial, um, leave them below. I'll actually try my best to uh, create them. So I'll see you next time. Goodbye.